Hi, and thanks for watching Back to the Altar. You know, I can remember when I thought Halloween was just a fun little holiday where we got dressed up, we took our kids out, and it was just a whole lot of innocence until I watched what you're about to experience. Get ready, this one will change your world. Here comes Pastor Glenn with Mom and I Be a Witch. So to do that, you would have them, you'd have food, and you'd also offer them a place to go and stay. Basically, if you did that, they would not harm your crops, steal your children, so forth, things like that is what they would say. To exercise this demon or to cause that demon to move, you would have to lay out and provide shelter and food. So that was the treat. If they were not satisfied or basically appeased the spirit is what that is. And this is an idea of what we're kind of doing with some of this is, is an idea of appeasing the spirit and so forth and kind of entertaining the spirit. If the spirit was not satisfied and didn't have anything and nothing was provided, then you would have the trick there and what would happen, they would leave your place in turmoil or havoc or whatever and they would destroy your, your cattle or your livestock and so forth. October 31st is called the Festival of the Dead. It is the beginning of, of, it's on Halloween, it is the beginning of Halloween and is celebrated during this time and what communities did, they would come together, they'd have a bonfire and the whole community would come out. And when they would all come out, they would sacrifice their crops, they would put something of, of purpose there and there were people that would even sacrifice their children and sacrifice themselves. You say, well, does that really happen? Well, look what ISIS is doing today. They don't mind sacrificing themselves for the cause. They believe so much into what their mission is, they're willing to kill themselves, blow themselves up. So we know that happens. They would wear costumes of the day. It's where the costumes came from. Made from the heads of animals, and they would then have fortune telling and so forth, things like this of the coming year. Now the reason they would wear the costumes because they believe the spirit went into an animal and that was to disguise yourself from the evil spirit so now you're involved in this as if like a rabbit's foot would be like oh I got a lucky rabbit's foot or I have a medal or something that kind of is, is it, 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 it's uh, it keep me safe things like that so this is what they would do now today uh, what has happened in the costumes and stuff, we, we don't have the little animal costumes anymore. It's really gotten so demonic now because of everything that's come into our society, and it's actually getting more and more demonic. I'll show you a few things here. You can see this is now, uh, we don't have a little lion head, a little tiger head like it used to be. It's about as vile and it's about as evil, and I don't know any child that wants to see this and then go to bed at night and have my child scared as if and calling it fun. I'm calling this fun. You go ahead. Uh, of course, you have the black cats. These are in some of the stores right here in town. Uh, we have stuff for babies. You've got the, all the Halloween stuff for babies. Have a, have a Halloween with. These are some of the costumes that you could buy for children and for young people. These are elementary school uh, different pictures right here that we have. Uh, and you can see where this has gone. Uh, we even have the satanic priest. Uh, I got it right here. This is a uh, costume that is a satanic priest. Here's the hood. You have the hood, you put the hood on, and then you also have the medallion here you wear. It has a satanic symbol in it, and it's got a circle around it. And this is a priest costume for children. So you can see how Harry Potter, should I say that again? Should I say Harry Potter? And this that you see is just fun, no big deal. Well, you can see the costumes because of Harry Potter and getting a witch's costume and so forth in any of these things and even the Disney movies that come out, you have to be moms and dads very, 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 very careful. You've got to. You must. So as we look at this today here, amen, okay. Now, I'm giving you truth, folks. I'm giving you truth. Just hang on. No, not too many people are doing this, but thank God we need to hear the truth. God says expose it, so I've got to expose it. Just give me one Sunday a, a year to do this. Uh, see, Halloween, now listen, Halloween, as you heard, is one of the most sacred days of the year. It's the most sacred days of the year for witches. They have basically four big, big days, festivals. 
They have also February 2nd, which is all about seasons. You welcome the spring, April, April 30th, they welcome the summer, August 1st, they welcome harvest, and October 31st, they welcome winter. Winter is a time where leaves fall off the trees, everything begins to die. This is the day. Now, I mentioned to you about wearing the mask, of people putting masks on. You see, all these stores have masks you can wear. I'm going to let the witch and the witches tell you about this. And you'll see the first one is one of these witches that talks about seeing people walking in a building on Halloween night that has no floor. And then you'll see one of the, uh, the priestess witch that she's going to talk about wearing the mask. And who would have thought that we would have a video that we got that is a witch's warning you and I about that night? I was uh, one time living in an apartment across from an abandoned hospital that was during World War II, and I used to look out my window and look at it, and I would see I'd see people walking. The lights were on up there. I went over and talked to the security guard. Like, I think homeless people are in that hospital. He said, they can't. They can't get up. There's no floors. There's nothing they can stand on. And the, the energy and the feeling around it. And then around Halloween is when I really saw more. There is an energy that comes with the mask, and and um, if they are psychically sensitive, they could pick up on that energy. Uh, I would be very reverent and careful. Just know that something deeper is at work, and if you feel the slightest inkling that something isn't right, pay attention. Well, wow. something is at work that you don't know about and this is here, and the mask has the attraction to draw the spirit see to that mask. Now, Anton LaVey, some of you know who that is, some of you don't, and some young people might not know. Anton LaVey is the author of the Satanic Bible. He is the high priest of the Church of Satan. He's not alive right now, he's burning. And uh, he, is the, he is the high priest. He says this, there are three of the most important days for Satanists. This is the head of the satanic church. He says, your birthday is one of those days. April 30th is one of those days. And he says, the most important day is October 31st. Now, who would have thought that here's the high priest of the church of Satan that is going to tell us what he thinks about Halloween. And he's got a message for the Christian people. Here he is with his own quote. Anton LaVey says... I am glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year. The founder of the Church of Satan. Thank you, Christian people, for not looking at this as a big deal. Thank you for introducing them to what I serve, and I serve Satan. Thank you. I know marijuana is no big deal, but how many of you know it leads to something more and leads to something else? Do not have an entry point in your life where you allow your children to have this come. You've got a church of Satan saying, thank you for allowing this to happen. Now, you've got to understand that this is the beginning of the witchcraft year. This is a huge night. It's the beginning of darkness. It's the beginning of death. And there'll be newscasters that will talk about this and share about this, of being careful on this night. You'll have those that, that, that you can adopt dogs and pets. They will shut down because they know that Satanists have come in, people in the cult come in and get the animals for one purpose, and that is to sacrifice them. You know what? We have the police department. We have the sheriff's department. We have the highway patrol. We have Satanists. We have witches that are telling you, you need to beware on this night. And it's amazing that we have Christian people that take no regard and understand how serious this night is. Everybody else is taking it serious. I think in the church, we need to take it serious with our own families. In this message here, we're going to learn the truth. We're going to hear all about it. October 31st is called the Festival of the Dead. The earliest celebrations of Halloween were held by this group called the Druids. What I want to tell you is facts are facts. Regardless of what you believe, facts will override what your feelings are.
If you want to stay plugged in on Glenbird Toe Ministries, you can check out our website, glenbirdtoe.com, or you can follow us on social media for quick updates on what you need in your life. And over the years, I have been asked by a lot of people, almost 40 years of ministry I've had, and we're still growing. And there are principles that I have used in my ministry for so many years that I want to teach you. Not only are you going to hear my messages, my leadership areas that I want to teach you, I've also opened up all of our different ministry areas. So I have my children's pastor that is teaching your children's pastors or anybody interested in children uh, how to build a children's ministry, youth ministry, young adult ministry, married ministry, men's ministry, all the ministries of a church. This is going to be available for you for the Leadership Plus area. And I'm excited about helping you to see that dream and that passion that you have to see people reach. This is going to help you, and I pray that it will be a tremendous time of growth in your life, and I would love to hear the results. It's not harmless. It's not harmless. God, God is very serious about this, and I'll show you how serious he is. In Deuteronomy, he says, when you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs of the nations. Do not imitate. Now, what did I just, what is all this right here? This is an imitation of a detestable custom is what it is. He's very clear. Go to the next scripture. It says, for example, never sacrifice your son and daughter. The only reason it says that because people were doing that. Stop that. Don't do that as burnt offerings. Do not let your people practice fortune telling, use sorcery, or interpret omens, or engage in witchcraft, or cast spells, or function as mediums, or psychics, or call forth the spirits of the dead. Uh, I don't know who is here in this meeting, but I know there's always people that identify themselves with, with uh, witchcraft and in the occult that will come into our meetings. We had those last night that came in dressed in black. I'm glad that you're here. I'm not afraid of you. Matter of fact, you need to be afraid of me because my God is much bigger than who you serve. So you're on shaky ground right now. And you need, to, you need to be worried about if you try to put a hex or a curse, you're going to pay for that trying to come against somebody like me that's covered in the blood of Christ and has the Holy Spirit inside. We found outside, now see, I'm from Louisiana, where I understand a little bit of voodoo growing up with it down in New Orleans area and know what it is. And I know when you take chicken feet and you put it in a certain way that you're trying to curse a place. We had some chicken feet outside over here as if they're putting to have a curse or a hex against our place. What we do in Louisiana, we deep fry chicken feet. We eat chicken feet, you understand? What I'm asking you to do is next time you come with your chicken feet, bring the thigh and the breast so I can give it to Popeyes to cook me up some chicken, if that's what you're going to do. But if you think you're going to put some chicken feet and you're going to stop the Word of God from taking place in our city, you better wake up! I got a word of God and you got chicken feet. So that's not a fair fight right there, friend. <laughs> so behind me, you can see all the symbols here. You have the uh, all trick or treat. I told you about trick or treat. It's a, that's a pagan, that's part of a pagan thing. It's done in, in Ireland hundreds, hundreds of years ago they started this. And as you know, people would go house to house begging for food and for the, in the festival and so forth and uh, of their ancient gods. That's what they would do. And good luck was promised to those that got something. And of course, bad luck was promised. That's the whole idea of trick or treat. When you engage in that and they walk up to the trick or treat, what you're doing, you're engaging in one of the detestable practices of darkness. See what I'm saying? So it says, do not get involved in that. Now, let's explain a little bit of jack-o'-lantern. Jack-o'-lantern, you can see the carvings in the jack-o'-lanterns and then with lights in them. Uh, what it is, there was a person that named Jack 
that could not enter in, they say, here's the folk folklore. I don't, I don't think this, this is something you can, you can totally base it upon, but this is where the whole thing came from. Uh, that Jack could not enter into uh, heaven or hell. And he was, he was doomed to roam, basically just roam the earth. And so what they would do, that on that night, they knew that Jack was coming back in a sense. And so they would carve out turnips and pumpkins. And they would put a scary face and put a light in it as if to scare him away. So what you're doing, you're involved in demonic activity when you do this and you carve it out. Now, are pumpkins bad? No. Pumpkin pie? Good. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is, is when you get into carving the face, an evil face in it, uh, then that's where you move into an area of the practices of this. So j that's just the understanding of that. Also, you see black cats and you see witches that are involved with this. And witches would, in the ancient days, they would dance around with brooms and they would jump around a fire. And then it just kind of folklore grew where they're flying on brooms. But they would dance around the fire and they would leap and dance around and so forth, things like that. Witches always had a familiar spirit with them. And a black cat was the witch's demon helper. I have a video of, of, of a witch talking about this and that she had her, her, her spirit guide in, in her cat. And, one, and, and it's true. And she says on Halloween, I said, I want to see my spirit guide. And she goes, it was the most hellish thing it appeared to me. And that's what turned me around and got me saved. I saw that this thing was as evil as it possibly could be. So witches, and, you know, witches had black cats as, as demon guys, and they would have it that. That's where that comes from. You'll see skeletons during this time at Halloween because it's a picture of death. It's a picture of fear. It's a picture of hopelessness of what it is. And you'll see also the colors of black, which is darkness. It deals with uh, uh, death. Uh, orange deals with hell. You have pictures that bats are part of Halloween because bats are part of, of uh, it's a prey. It's, a, it's an animal that preys on things at night, eats at night, flies like a bird, symbol of the soul. It's a dweller of darkness like demons and so forth. That's why Dracula, you know what Dracula means? It means son of the, de son of the dragon. So Dracula, son of the dragon, and he kind of appears and turns into a bat. He steals your soul, so forth. Everything's kind of in that area, kind of demonic there. Now, has the festival called uh, Halloween infected our society? Has it infiltrated? Absolutely it has. It has totally come in to our society. It's totally in every place. I remember when, when uh, you and I, many of us older were, all we saw was Wizard of Oz and the whole witch in that was the first time we kind of saw a witch and we saw it melt through the floor. And it was just the most amazing special effects we've ever seen. <laughs> and, and that's basically what we have. But today it's totally different. If you want to today, you can just go online and you get a satanic altar kit. You get everything the Satanists use here, and you get a satanic altar kit. You get all the stuff you want to use. Anybody get that just online, just send it. Uh, you can see here, this is a person that is a Satanist, and he's got his, uh, his, his I want to just show you the upside down crucifix, which is totally uh, mocking God and uh, totally just says he's defeated. And uh, the devil basically rules in this. Also, we have the children's Ouija board now, if you knew. We have the adult one, but we also have the children's Ouija board. We also have, uh, this just happened here just this year. Drag Queen Demon reads to the kids at Michelle Obama's library. Uh, this just happened, and this was uh, not just very recently. This was uh, in one of the papers, and which is, which. do I really want my child to be read to by this person here and then go home at night and have that picture in my child's mind, and I'm wondering why they have night terrors, and I wonder why they have to sleep with a light on. We also have uh, the satanic children's books now. We have these. We, and at the top of it, you might not be able to read it, it says satanic children's big book of activities is actually pretty cute. It's a satanic children's uh, big book of activities. So you can open it up. You have pentagrams you can color. You have uh, all kinds of satanic symbols that you can cover. And then also we've lost Barbie to the dark side. Uh, now she's a witch. So... If you love Barbie, pray for her. She's gone. She's gone. She's sold out. As you know, the occult is, is pretty much infiltrated everything in our society, right? Uh, it's in music. Uh, you can even get it in your phone covers. Uh, it's in games. Uh, it's pretty much everywhere. We have all kinds of... Uh, we have all kinds of... Uh, 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 paranormal shows 
Uh, they're always looking for ghosts. Uh, they're, they're always, you know, you know, got all this camera work here. I've never seen one. And when I watch it, it's not a ghost. They just kind of, oh, did you hear that? And nothing's there. And, and we have, we have, but it's all this paranormal. You notice that's kind of really in, and they're, they're, they're making money off of it, else they wouldn't be on TV. You have, you have, you have uh, kid psychics. You have the kid psychic show. Uh, they have pet psychics. Did you know they have pet psychics? That if you're having a problem with your dog and you don't, and the doctor doesn't know what's wrong, you can call up a pet psychic, and 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 he'll just look at your dog, and and and, and the a demon will tell him what's wrong with Rover, and and Rover, uh, his, his dad left him when he was little, and and didn't get a bone when he was a child. So that's pretty much what happens to your dog. In one of the column that I read, a teacher of a fourth grade class asked her students to write a short essay on what they would like to do most to celebrate Halloween. Eighty percent of her nine-year-olds expressed the wish to kill somebody. Now, tell me, are they born with that idea or you think they see that on TV and movies that we are allowing for them to see because we're watching it? How would you like to be, have your children introduced to witchcraft in their elementary school? Now, this is going to alarm you here when I read you this. But this is true. I'm not going to tell you the elementary school, but the elementary school students were taken overnight to, on a field trip to a local graveyard. They learned magic and witchcraft in the classroom. Now the lawsuit lists more than 30 instances. They're suing them. The parents, the Christian parents, are suing them for doing this to their children. Thank God for these Christian parents. Here's what they did. First school officials invited a new age crystal healer and a psychic to speak at the elementary school. Secondly, third graders learned how to tell fortunes and read tarot cards. And the most bizarre example for the lesson about evolution, fourth graders were taken on a field trip to a graveyard. We were taken to a children's cemetery and you walk onto the tombs and lie down on the gravesite to see if you could fit into the child's coffin. A school does this, field trip. In addition, fourth graders had to write a poem entitled, How God Messed Up. The fifth graders performed various Aztec rituals, including one to conjure up dead spirits. Sixth graders spent three months learning about pagan gods who are central to New Age occultism. All the devil's toys will have a payday one day. They're all going to cost you. They all will. Now, as you know, I, I just mentioned to you earlier, being from South Louisiana, which if I'm in New Orleans, there are voodoo shops all along, and you've seen that, and people have that there. Hispanics here have a day of the dead. And I know we have probably half our church would be Hispanic here, and some of you, culturally, you grew up with this. But as I have shared all of this, I waited for you to hear that so you can hear how close it is to all of the detestable practices that I just spoke about in the history of what October 31st is. Let me show you. This is a newspaper. This is in our, was in our paper of the Day of the Dead. Let me read you this and see what this sounds like to you. Every autumn when America celebrates Halloween, Mexico celebrates death. For Mexicans, the Day of the Dead actually lasts three days. The holiday is a mixture of Catholicism and the beliefs of Aztecs and other indigenous people in Mexico. That's not Bible. It's not saying there. It's not simply a chance to remember the dead, but to communicate with their spirits. Now look at me. You're not communicating with Aunt Arthur. You're not, you're not communicating with Uncle Jack. You're not communicating with Cousin, Cousin Bill. They are dead. To be absent from the body, you're either with the Lord or now you have gone to the other place. You're not lingering around after you die. It's an appointment of the man wants to die and then judgment. So what you're doing is when you're doing this, you're not speaking to your dead relative. You're speaking to an evil spirit, a demonic spirit. Okay? Now, you can say, well, I don't know if I want to believe that. I just don't feel that's right. Well, I I'm telling you right here what the Bible says. You're not speaking to your relative. You can't call your relative back. All of that the mediums are doing, they're conjuring an evil spirit. So family members then drive hundreds of miles to return to burial sites of mothers. According to the Mexican beliefs, the spirits of the dead travel home, wow, once a year to dine on food and also spend the night. Did I not talk about that? That happened, I don't know how many years ago, the same thing? And we're still doing that today? Well, tell me if that's not a detestable practice that we talked about. Mexicans set up elaborate altars so that their deceased loved ones will want to come home. Do not 
It's, it, it's not your relative coming home. You understand? Do not allow that to happen. Please do not allow that to happen. You say, well, that's our culture. Get rid of it in your culture. I have to get things out of my culture, too. You got to do that, too. You are a child of God. Act like a child of God. Don't act like a person of the world. We're not of this world. We're in it, but we're not of it. Amen. In Leviticus, it says it very clearly. God has a view on this. He says, do not defile yourselves by turning to mediums or those who consult spirits of the dead. I am the Lord, your God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, can I? Don't do it is saying. It says this in Thessalonians. It says, stay away from every kind of evil, period. That's a command to you and I, stay away. Don't be involved. So that's why we give the alternative. It's really not the alternative. We would be doing this. If there was some day the devil ever stole from God or stole his day, we're going to come back and trump that thing and take the territory back because it is God's day. In this message here, we're going to learn the truth. We're going to hear all about it. October 31st is called the Festival of the Dead. The earliest celebrations of Halloween were held by this group called the Druids. What I want to tell you is facts are facts regardless of what you believe. Facts will override what your feelings are. in the battlefield I see an alarm going on sound an alarm God sound an alarm wake them up just like when they wake up from their slumber right now they're waking up from their slumber sicknesses and illnesses and infirmities broken by the blood of Jesus right now we've got the necks of our enemy we're standing on the necks of our enemy and we tell him you are a defeated foe you are a defeated foe. You have been dethroned and disarmed and defeated. You are under our feet. In the name of Jesus, I see an army of people rising up. If you want to stay plugged in on Glenbird Toe Ministries, you can check out our website, glenbirdtoe.com, or you can follow us on social media for quick updates on what you need in your life.